Hey, this is Paranormal Girl, the mandala, mapping the cosmos and the soul. Human cultures are replete with ways to depict or represent some aspects of the universe. Calendars, ordinary maps, star charts and other diagrams are all examples of ways to make sense of or map part of reality. The calendar is a way to understand time, just as a map is a way to understand geography. Even ancient temples were designed to be a model to make sense of the cosmos. One type of map or diagram is the mandala, which could be thought of as a map of reality itself. Mandala is a Sanskrit word which simply means circle. It's used within many Indian religions for meditation or to invoke the power of a deity. Within Hinduism, a common type of mandala is the yantra, which usually depicts a circle with a deity with which it's associated at its centre. Types of Buddhist Mandalas A typical Buddhist or Hindu mandala consists of a square with four gates representing cardinal directions with a circle circumscribing it. A circle can contain elements which represents physical aspects of the universe, such as the elements earth, fire, water, air, and can also include symbolism of a more directly religious or spiritual nature. One Buddhist mandala contains an outer circle with fire representing a carnal ground where corpses could be left and buried to decompose. The inner circle within a square represents the boundaries of a realm outside of the samsara where gods and enlightened ones or buddhas dwell. The realm outside of the samsara is the abode of those who have achieved enlightenment and have successfully broken free of the reincarnation circle. The symbols representing the carnal grounds are meant to remind people of the brevity of human life and how nothing lasts and to remember not to become too attached to anything lest it lead to suffering. Another Buddhist mandala called the Cosmic Mandala consists of a fiery red outer circle and an inner circle containing spiral lines. The inner circle of the mandala represents the first movement of the universe. Extending between the inner and outer circles are symbols representing the elements which the makers of the symbols believed composed of the universe. And this is a depiction of the Chinese Kosu depicting Mount Yeru from the Yang dynasty of 1271 to 1368. The woven mandala or cosmic diagram illustrates Indian imagery introduced into China in conjunction with the advent or esoteric Buddhism. A map of the cosmos and soul. Although mandalas feature prominently in Hinduism, Buddhism and Jaism and other Indian religions Symbols similar to the mandala can also be found in the Christian world. The, the Dromenon is a diagram on the floor of the Chartres Cathedral in France, which represents the soul travelling from the outer world into the sacred, in a world where God dwells. Although the mandala is a map of the cosmos, it can also be a map of the soul, based on the belief of many traditions of the inner life of the soul mirrors the outer life of the cosmos. This is seen in earlier examples of the Buddhist mandala. The outer edge of the mandala typically represents the beginnings of a person's spiritual journey. The centre of the mandala represents the core of reality where a person's spiritual journey culminates. In Buddhism, it culminates into Nirvana and the realm of the enlightened ones beyond the temporary world of Samsara. In Christianity, the centre of the mandala would be the place where God dwells, 
on where the traveller finds God and discovers the true meaning of life and becomes what he or she was intended to become. Political usage of the term mandala. In addition to its religious meanings, modern historians and anthropologists have also used the term mandala to describe the nature of political institutions in Southeast Asia. European scholars studying the region noticed that statecraft in ancient Southeast Asia, Asia differed, differed considerably from either the Western or Chinese conception of the state. Rather than centralised states with defined borders and an established bureaucracy, policies of the Southeast Asian consisted of a network of tributary states and satellite kingdoms, which were internally autonomous, but required to pay tribute to a central power. In this way, empires of Southeast Asia were much less centralised and defined more by a powerful centre than by its edges. Mandala was chosen as a term to refer to these empires to avoid using the word state. This is probably because these empires ruled, ruled through economic rather than territorial dominance, creating a political pattern that resembled a mandala. Smaller and less important policies at the far edge of the most powerful policies which define the political climate at the centre. And here is a picture of the Bunga Mass, which translates as golden flowers. It was a tribute sent every three years to the Siamese government in Bangkok, and it was a symbol of friendship by the Malay rulers of the northern state of the peninsula Kedar, Kelatan, Teragnu, and Patani. The mandala has numerous meanings but it essentially represents a metaphysical map of the world. It shows how a particular religion or culture sees the relationship between the physical world, the spiritual world, and the divine. This leads to an interesting question. What would be the form of a mandala depicting the metaphysical views of the modern West? Knowing how to construct such a mandala would probably help us understand the West better, as well as lead to a better understanding of the mandala itself. So what's your thoughts on the mandala? Do you think it might be something else that we're looking at? Do you actually think that it represents the cosmos? Or do you think it's representing something more inner and spiritual? Leave a comment in the section below, I'd be interested in your thoughts on this. Thank you for listening.